Are you ready? Ready when you are, sunshine. I'm Dan Watson. It's <laughs> 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 just such a prick, man. You fucking throw me off every fucking time with your stupidness. And I'm Paul Slugger. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the dirt. Um, oh, in fact, sorry, no. I've done it Fuck wrong, it. haven't I? Fucked it up. Welcome to the Dirt E podcast, episode three. Let's get him in here. Tilo Su. Um, I hope that's how it's pronounced. I've taken the risk. I'm gambling. And he's going to come out. out. Straight Hello. in again. <laughs> Yo, Tilo. <laughs> Hiya. Thank Good evening. You. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us today, this evening. Thank you, my uh, pleasure. My it's pleasure. nice to have someone in the in the same time zone. Actually, we've done a few episodes now where we've been out of time zones and stuff, <laughs> but to know we're in the same. Uh, where Where are you joining us from today, too? Uh, London. So I moved here a couple of years back, three, four, four years ago now, from Shanghai. So yeah, I've been enjoying living in the UK. Nice. Nice. Right, so, first question for me, straight in there. What yeah. are you importing? Before you moved from Shanghai, did you yeah. find e-boarding at home? Yeah, I did. So I bought my first e-board in 2016, I think it was. Uh-huh. So did, did you skate or snowboard or anything? Or anything I like mean, that? I casually like longboarded a little bit, but not really seriously. So like, I used to commute on a longboard, but that was pretty much my extent of skateboarding. I didn't really do any tricks or anything, so... Uh-huh. I just got another electric longboard to commute on, basically, originally. So, yeah, I mean, only when after I moved to the UK, I kind of got more serious into, like, pushing myself on a board. Nice. Fair enough. And um, what, so what do you, um, what do you do for a living? You know, like... uh, right now, I'm, like, working in film production. I, like, shoot bit films and stuff as for a living, I guess, is the Fair. best description. I like to work camera, uh, work with cameras. And like that, that yeah. would explain are they all are those all lenses behind you in that cabinet? Yeah, there? there's a lot of lenses in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can see him. And I, I thought he's either got a flask obsession and really likes taking tea, or those are <laughs> everywhere he goes, or those are lenses. <laughs> yeah. Um oh awesome. Um that would that would explain potentially some of the high qualityness of some of your reels and Instagram posts. Yeah. Uh, I've only recently started to shoot I mean it's Really simple though, those reels. It's basically just a tripod, place it down, ride out of frame, ride back into frame, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, you came was it, Came from China, Shanghai to the UK, yeah. uh, you say four years ago now, and you'd had, yeah. you had uh, an e skate in Shanghai before that. Yeah. So, what, what year did you first indulge in the, in the electric scene? Uh, I think it was when I moved to the UK in 2019. Uh-huh. I went on a group ride. Back then, I was still on a boosted V2. So. Was that that was your first board, the boosted V2? No, I had a board before that, and then that I killed that like Chinese knockoff thing. It was before the V2 came out. I think it was just as the boosted V1 came out, and before KC and stuff blew up with electric skateboarding. So um, yeah, I got. Then after Casey blew up, I obviously followed him, bought a boosted board, and rode a boosted V two for quite a while. I still own that board and still use it every now and then to commute right. to get around nearby on. But um, yeah, after I got into the UK, I went on a couple of group rides, met Billy yep. and Tom Kilminster, uh, and then they brought me to Belgium. Nice, big up the boys, Billy. Yeah. And- they brought me to Belgium, and that's when I first like saw. Oh wow, there's a lot of people doing this, and kind of got more and more serious into it. Uh huh. And yeah. uh, because you don't, obviously, we are labelling ourselves, if you will, because we, me and Slogs, the, the only form of electric that that we ride are mountain boards. Yeah. Um. Which, uh, as we all know, we, you, you you wouldn't necessarily be here if you didn't ride some form yeah. of mountain board, or at least be involved in the scene in some way. Um, but it has to be said, you were drawn to my attention at eBit a couple of years back. Um, the first, yes, first eBit. eBit. Um, and 
as uh, Shaz from um, Carve puts it, I regard you as what's called, a, 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 what do they call him? A, an electric uh, Jedi or a PV Jedi. Oh, yeah. You ride more than, like, we just ride mountain boards, electric yeah. downhill, but you ride, as as we discover, electric skateboards as well, um, yeah. seriously well. And, and th- we've come to this point about EBIT because you were putting in stonking times there <laughs> um, on, on, on a, a four-wheel drive. We we we'll get to that bit in yeah. a minute. We we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but also electric unicycle as well. Yeah, um, I can't think of any more. I'm sure you're probably uh, all right on Billy's uh, trikes as well. Yeah, I mean I've broken his trike once, so I don't really have to <laughs> anymore. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, well, that's what they're there for. You got to push the limits of the team. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I have a tendency to break things on electric, like boards and like unicycles you know, and everything I touch it. So, are you, <laughs> are you on the side of the electric where you can fix it yourself? Yeah, you, uh, luckily I know how to well? fix it. Yeah, yeah so, see, that's the thing. When I break it, it's broken until I find someone who can repair it for me. Yeah, but you're getting I'm, better on the mechanical stuff, slugs, but the, the electric side of things. Uh, yeah. Anything that involves the the non the non gravity parts. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the problem with electric, it's it's invisible witchcraft, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of, yeah, more or less. Yeah, you should never. You should give sorcery a step back. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. I mean, I learned it throughout like the last couple of years as well. Like, I had to fi- fix electric stuff because it just kept on breaking and having to pay to get them repaired just was like way too expensive or just not feasible. So I kind of just learned as I went on how to repair my own stuff. I still don't enjoy repairing it, but like when I have have to, I guess I have to. (laughs) So you you say you went to, you were introduced to the scene a bit by Billy and Tom there and they took you out to Belgium. Yeah. What 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 happened in Belgium? I mean, providing what happened in Belgium doesn't stay in Belgium, what can you <laughs> tell us about it? <laughs> uh, Belgium was like what it's actually an EUC like thing, but we went as borders, and Lee and actually Lee went. I think Ben was there as well. It was a couple of the old like before Apex became a thing. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, quite a few UK borders went, and we went as a a big group, and realized that it was actually an EUC event and not an Eve skate event. So, <laughs> <laughs> so was did, like did, that, of, did they welcome you or? Yeah, we were ver- very much welcome still, but like it was just, we were kind of out of place with all the UCs around just a couple of boards. So, but it was still like nice. I got to meet a lot of new people for the first time. Uh-huh. So yeah, it was a good entry, I think. I mean, as we said, that is the, the kind of uh, nice thing about the electric scene as a whole. And I, I say the electric scene because... Yeah that everybody crosses over you know like i suppose it's a bit different with mountain boarding and stuff because it's so off-road based yeah um but you've you've got to be of a certain you've either got to have a certain style of board or you've got to be inclined to be riding off-road yeah stuff but when it comes to the rest and and light off-roading you know parks and stuff like that it becomes available to the all-terrain skateboards the ucs and and they all seem to come together in quite large numbers for these group rides yeah it it does seem very welcoming yeah i mean i feel like ucs especially are becoming more and more off-roady as well i think i can tackle more technical terrain it's less fun but I can tackle more technical terrain on my EC than I can on my board. Yeah. Just the bigger wheel suspension just means you can do the rough. And, and the way that they're ridden as yeah. well, the, the, the body weight over, over the top, it allows yeah. for that pressure to be directly exactly. down on the, the contact point. Yeah. And, you know, and that's going to, uh, has the potential for massive grip levels. Exactly. So, you know, some of the inclines that you see the EUCs go yeah. in, in a straight line uh, are crazy. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that it's not possible on a mountain board, but you, there's hard. very much <laughs> different ways of tackling yeah. things, aren't there? You know, like 
uh, I saw someone the other day going up like the the embankments underneath uh, flyovers and yeah. stuff from a standing start at yeah. the bottom, just slow, talky yeah. riding. It, it, they do look pretty nuts. And and you know, again, going back to the EBIT thing, we saw you there again putting in tasty times on the EUC as well. Yeah, it was fun trying to. <laughs> so. I can't, we, we've we've talked we've we've touched on it too many times. Let's talk about EBIT. Yeah. Go on. Go on. EBIT one, the first. EBIT, EBIT one, the first, first one. Yeah. So yeah, oh, you had the first one. Was I it, missed the first one. It was the second one. Yeah, last oh, last yeah. year, wasn't it? Yeah, I missed the first one because I wasn't in the country. So, but I've heard, I've heard a lot of stuff about it, and I know. Shaz and stuff mentioned stuff about it, like whilst, but although I wasn't there. Um, but yeah, the second one was the first one I attended. I'm going to be there this year again. That's it. And that, so, was, that was, you, so you was came along. God, was it the first time you'd ever been to Bugs when you rocked up at eBay? Yeah, it was. It was the first time I've ever been at Bugs. Well, that's, the, the tracks were new. Yeah. Done all right, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I was very happy with it. <laughs> it was it was a hell of a sight. Now I, I I think I'm right in remembering our conversation back then. In that, um, I said to you, do do you do you mountain board as well? And you said, yeah, yeah, I've got an electric mountain board. It's just broken, which goes back to our earlier conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that that you had planned on bringing the mountain board as well, but you came along on um. Uh, your atlas is that right yeah it was it was the x-ray atlas x-ray atlas and that's a, a four-wheel drive board for any of the yeah. mountain boarders that you know aren't necessarily familiar um no bindings yeah um, apps uh, put down what can only be described as some very competitive times <laughs> i can't remember them off the top of my head but i remember just thinking oh my days where is this kid coming from yeah. and then you went out and done a run on the euc or, or so and yeah that was nowhere near as competitive though it definitely. wasn't as competitive but it was still a hell of a sight because you were uh, uh, from memory i think you were the only euc rider there was that uh, was there more? Lee brought his as long but he didn't really race on it I That's just tried. Right. I was like, "Why not try doing a lap on it? No harm done." So now, why why did you feel uh, why why do you feel that oh, that that wasn't why wasn't the EUC as capable in that environment in comparison to the board? Now we're not we can't make a comparison to your mountain yeah. because that wasn't there. But your your four wheel drive, what was what was so good about that? and yeah. didn't work for the EUC so much, given I what mean, we've just spoken about, because it was yeah. the it was the enduro sections yeah. that, were, that you were really, you know, putting down the pace. Yeah. I mean, the EUC, I think, I mean, the EUC I brought with me was very much a street-focused one. It had stupid amounts of range. I've done 100-something miles per day on that thing. Right. It's got a on big one On one charge? It, just like one and a half charges. You only charge once that day, basically. Yeah. Oh. It's got a huge ass battery. It weighs like somewhere near fifty kilos. Right. So it was it was not suited for off road. That okay. was very so much. Now this is where we're showing our noobness again. Yeah. Because they are obviously going to be different types of EUC. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have an an, an off road biased? EUC as well now? Or? Yeah, I've sold that one now and bought a more off-road bias one now with suspension, a smaller battery, and it's a lot lighter. And mm. done tried more off-roading a bit, but I keep on breaking it, so I've not really <laughs> been touching it much. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, so we're not in danger then of any time soon of seeing like uh, shibby time jumps coming from no. it. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> nice. Um, so going back to your your atlas there, yeah, that took that course there that we were riding was pretty technical in places, yeah. um, and I personally rely as most mountain boarders do, and and it's certainly a lot you know the electric mountains do. We do rely on on our bindings, yeah. um, and I can't think in a world that I would be able to you know I can ride a skateboard, I can ride a longboard, yeah. you know I should imagine. Given half an hour on a 
on any particular board. I could probably keep up with the pack and be doing my yeah. thing on it. But that course was tech as fuck. And there were sand puddles and, yeah. you know, off camber sections of it. Um, it was the four wheel drive playing in your favor there? But, or, or, or are you, you know, you just, without wanting to sound like I'm blowing smoke, are you just <laughs> naturally gifted on these things? Because I can't see how you were staying on the board. The roughness yeah. of the terrain and the, you know, everything about it just screams to me that I would be shaken off that board or tipped off or, you know, what what's your secret, I guess? I think the best thing about those boys on that kind of track is the trucks are a lot looser, so I can pick different lines compared to you guys. Mm -hmm. I watched, like, a lot of Eamon and the Bryn brothers ride down it, and they would go through the rougher stuff that I, would, that I knew I wouldn't be able to do, so I'd kind of go around it and be able to get back online again. When, like, on my mountain board, my trucks, the trucks are so much tighter and I'm not able to, like, go through the narrower gaps. I think that was the biggest difference. Right, right. The, the, so the truck the truck width allowed you to to pick a, a small, a tighter path with the in combination with the, the looser trucks. Yeah, I think that was the only reason I managed to stay on the board. If it was a tighter yeah, and I truck. Suppose, I suppose yeah. the four-wheel drive part of it must have added a bit of extra traction. Yeah, I mean, up the hill it helped, but down the hill it was... I mean, braking, yeah, it definitely helps. Like, down those really techy braking sections, Yeah, it means I have a lot more control because on my mountain board I've had a, more than once where I've braked up and the back ends just slid out from underneath me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> up. So. Um, well, well, whilst we're on the subject, of, we've, we've spoken about your Atlas 4 drive, and obviously anybody can go and look at that, and I assume that... Uh, you wouldn't have had road-based tyres on that event. I can't remember what tyres you were running, but surely you weren't on slicks. Please say you weren't on No, slicks. I wasn't. I was on, like, <laughs> small knobbies. They were seven-inch knobbies. So they're one size smaller compared to mountain board tyres. Yeah. Um, so what what's your current mount, electric mountain board set up then? So it's currently a Apex... Well, was an Apex Predator, but I've actually swapped out both the trucks and the drives. Right. So I'm running, if you've heard of Newbie, he's a smaller company, but they're yeah. basically reverse kingpin mountain board trucks. Okay. So they're mounted at 15 degree angle, so you get a total of 45 degrees with the deck. Yeah. And it actually runs three bushings instead of two. So you've got two bushings board side and one bushing road side. It sounds like Day One Song's front truck. <laughs> um okay i i haven't seen this he's saying quickly go go googling these on going on to newbies i'm sure they'll, they'll have them on his instagram are they, are, they, are they the same width as the um apex trucks they're slightly wider than the airs which i told him not to do but he did anyways but um, wider than the airs yeah they're even wider than the airs whoa the airs are what 17 inch I mean, standard mountain boards, I think, are 16. Yeah, I think he's closing to the 18-inch width. Wow. Oh. It, it is, honestly, in my opinion, a little bit too wide, but yeah. it looks good on the board. Like, it, the stance, once it's on the board, it looks very pretty, that I have to admit. But I think for actual riding, a narrow truck is a better sort of thing for mountain boarding. Well, I, I can certainly see... Uh, the the advantages of both to be honest with you i have i've been running um the tramper irs which are the same width as the apex airs yeah um, and o over this winter and they're a fantastic um truck for you know rough terrain um uh, and just battling through stuff so i've got the spur yeah. a, a spur gear gear set up on those and i'm still on the 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 channel style trucks but with a belt system for summer months and i haven't changed it over yet but yeah. obviously that extra width i ride quite tight single track stuff yeah. generally a lot of it is around here bike orientated stuff and i find that yeah. i'm i'm mounting the the edges of the track way more yeah. with the the wider setup and i can yeah, only imagine it being more yeah it sucks it's kind of hard to do single track on it sometimes i was riding some like bike trails as well every day and there was like this drop off on one side and then a hill on the other side and i was like having to like lift up the front and tic-tac around to like stay on the path 
just to not get run off the road by the trucks. <laughs> I've just I've just found a a picture oh. there. I'll try and yeah. Uh, they look sweet. Square on there for ease of mounting, and I've got to say those those drives as well. They yeah. look really nice as well. I'm just currently running his drives as well right now because I snapped way too many moon gears. Right. So I've stopped to his and they've been pretty bulletproof for me, at least. Nice. You see yeah. That? Yeah, they are very nice. Very nice. Well, shout out the newbie. Very nice stuff there. So, and, but a little too wide. I, I'm assuming, well, everything can be done in version two, can't it? I suppose. That's true. Yeah. I mean, but, they... I feel like they sit in a nice in between for me f between channels and airs, like in like the PKP style trucks. Yeah, because I find the airs. I mean, I haven't really done that much time on the IRs, but the airs at least don't turn very well, in my opinion. Well, it all it all comes down to to angles, doesn't it? A lot of, yeah. a lot of it comes down to angles, and, and and as we covered in the last episode or the latest episode of the normal dirt, um, this, this subject came up, and and again that that. 45 degree um the, the the numbers adding up to 45 degree is is the key or was was the key i'm not sure i think uh, mountain board channels they run on a 30 degree don't they yeah um, as a standard but we all i've i've got uh ang wedge risers in uh one of my board that uh i think the the deck is a 27 degree deck so it, you know yeah. there's play there's a, there's there's room for play and and yeah. i think um people are just starting to cotton on to that as well uh with, with and the ability to 3d print risers these days that's true it's a lot easier to just try something exactly exactly i think we, that's the beauty of the electric scene it is so young at the moment yeah, people true. are motivated to try new stuff yeah found the perfect blend yet or maybe maybe we have just not not known it yet <laughs> um so well well going back on to ebit and on on the subject of that it, i'm hoping to try and get this out beforehand um, yeah depends on how much media and I, stuff i have to mix into it um but yeah if if we can get that out i'm assuming you will be at this year's ebit yeah event. i will be there Excellent. And and what, pray tell, will you be riding this year? <laughs> I will be riding my mountain board. Um, yeah. So I'll be on that setup. I'm probably not going to bring any EC this year just because it's big and heavy in the car. And we're bringing, there's quite a lot of us from London coming and not many cars going. So we're going to have to squeeze a lot into only a couple cars. So we'll see. Well, I have to say, are, are you still rocking the Merc? Yeah. So very nice, okay. <laughs> but probably not much room in the back. Maybe I don't. <laughs> <laughs> not once you got a load of luggage in there as well. Yeah, it's kind of a tight squeeze of all the boards and stuff. So we'll see. No, oh, I can't wait. It's only what a week and a bit away. Yeah, it's next. Not this weekend. Next weekend, isn't it? Yeah, not long to go. Yeah, I need to go. I need to change my motors before then. I killed the motor the other day. <laughs> well this is it i'm i'm undecided whether i just stick on the on my spur gear now or whether i change over to the lighter setup for it but i don't know that spur gear is it the, the gears are just bulletproof all of the gears yeah the experience of gears over belt in terms of endurance and and robustness they say yeah they've got it um if it's belts i've snapped too many belts i've even changed my atlas is on gear drives now anyways even that Ah, you've changed that over. Yeah. Uh, what? So, what gears are you running on that? And are you bringing that this year? Uh probably not. Just because it's now set up as a track board, right? So it's running really wide, well, wider slicks. They're like seventy-five mil wide slicks. Okay. What, uh, are you using a stretch tire on that, or are you? Yeah, the tire is already stretched, and it's a really wide hub. Like it's a physically wider tire and wider hub combination. Mm -hmm. so that's very much set up for like indoor track racing because i there was a couple of go-kart track events in germany for over the past couple of months that i went to was that one of those the onsra event yeah the onsra thing that came third yeah third or second third 
Perth. Very good. <laughs> so, so what, what, what? How did that event run? What, what's the um the, the discipline? And how do you run through through the um qualifiers and stuff like that? So they basically just did it as like a time attack kind of thing. So you, they did the lap one clockwise and one anti-clockwise, and then you combine the times for your final time. So it just one sense. person on a track at a time. No, so basically you'd go out in heats and like so it'd be you'd like qualify ish. Well, like basically the first runs were not in like specific groups. And then they take the fastest people, put them in one group, and they'd run at the same time. And then you just had to set one fastest time within like the seven minute time period you had. Mm -hmm. So and then just like whatever your fastest time is kept, and then you set a fastest time on the other direction, and then that fastest time is kept. I mean, the combination of two times your final time. Yeah. Which so meant, like, long... both. Go on, no, go sorry. How, how long was the track? <laughs> how long was the track? It was 35 seconds for me, I think, something like that. It wasn't very long. It's like 400 ish meters. So. Is it just marked, marked out on a flat track, is it? Or... No, no, it was a go kart track. Right. So, like, they rented out a go kart facility and just we had the track to ourselves, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. And and you say you've done a couple of other events. What are the, what were the other ones? Uh, there was a private event in Germany hosted by um, Nelson. He's going to be in the UK soon, actually, but he's more of a one-wheeler than anything else nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's going up to the Highlands. Yeah, he's going up to the Highlands next, the same weekend next, as EBIT. Yeah, same like, weekend as EBIT. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go to the Highlands, but I, um, I guess EBIT takes, uh, takes the thing here. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, it looked, uh, I don't, again, I don't know much about one wheels. I, I know that at the risk of, uh, I know Sonny Dibbons, uh, I think a pro, I think he's like been sponsored by them these days. Really? I've never seen but, Sonny on one wheel. Oh, he loves them. He absolutely really? loves them. <laughs> he's not going to love you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, at the risk of the I really like uh, the one wheels. I'd love to to have a go on one proper. I'd like to have one. You know, I mean, it's an expensive yeah. thing just to have in the corner yeah. to not necessarily use that often. But um, that that one wheel in the Highlands or whatever it's called, it, it looks like a really good event. And I think that the the electric mountain board community could should be cast in their eyes at this event. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, there's there's stuff to be learnt from what they're doing, for yeah. sure. Um, and they seem to have managed to crack through the the location. The location of hold holding these events, yeah, is always the difficult part, isn't it? Um, yeah. Because there's you know certain insurances yeah. and you know. Uh, health and safety things that have to be taken into account. It's why we don't see too many. Yeah. Uh, go kart events in this country because it has to be a very specific yeah. sort of track um, that doesn't have I don't know like the barriers uh, that you know that they're, they're specifically put at a certain height for go karts. Yeah. Yet the thinking is is that if we were to as standing riders at that pace take a take a tumble, it could you know be quite dangerous. Um, yeah. But they have taken is it I think it's Glencoe Resort. Yeah, it's Glencoe. Scotland. Um, which is a, a you know a, a famous snow yeah. ski resort, isn't it? Um, I'm interested to see their their sort of off roading if they're if they're utilising just the the vehicle access tracks and the logging routes and things like that. Then that's that's one thing that's possibly not too hard to be able to organise potentially. Right. Um, but if they're if they're allowed to use like single track mountain bike routes. Um, and are encouraged by Glencoe yeah. to do so, then I, I'm sitting here rubbing my hands thinking, who do I know up in Scotland that we can run something like that for the boards? Or whether, yeah. not like you going to the EUC event, if it doesn't tie in with anything, would we be welcomed yeah. at, at that sort of event? Um, yeah. Nelson, have a good time up there, buddy. I hope to, I look forward <laughs> to seeing what what comes out of it yeah. do you ride uh, do you ride one wheel as well Tilo? i do but only like casually i but recently um i've been eyeing up getting a vest one wheel 
So we've, we're all pretty familiar with BESC, I guess, because, I mean, Melon boards all, pretty much are all based on BESC controllers. Yeah. So uh, there's been some code being written to basically make VESC, uh like the brains of a one wheel and use its motor control and its gyroscopes to control yeah. a one wheel. And that means we can uh, have open source and you can do- literally download more power if you want to. Yes. That's the thing that does seem to be lacking a little bit, doesn't it? it, it yeah. I mean, I don't know, as a professor, I don't know much about it, but those that, that do, they that seems to be the one thing that, or there's a couple of things that seem to be an issue. The torque in yeah. climbing hills and this whole n- nosedive issue uh, uh, yeah. when, you're, when you're hitting top speed and it, like flattening out. Yeah. Um, those two issues, if they can be regulated and sorted out by like you say, open source code, because I know future motion, they will be, yeah. they're not going to be happy about it. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be, that would be pretty cool. So you, you, if that happens, will we see you on a one wheel more often than do you think? Uh, I mean, I had, oh, I was testing one out a couple years ago, back when the code was first being written on a one wheel. And I had a couple of crashes because of the co- like weirdness and, like prototype testing. So I haven't really pushed the limits on one wheel since those crashes. Yeah. It's like left a little bit of like a spot in my mind, but I still write them casually and I will probably be getting a best one soon, maybe later this summer. And we'll see how much trust I can gain in it and maybe I'll push it. Yeah. Oh, keep us posted. I mean, how, yeah. I wonder how they go about climbing steep inclines because of that overhang at the front. Yeah. yeah, if you're encountering any big boulders or rocks, yeah. like, it's got to be tricky. But then that it's a different sort of riding, isn't it? If you can, yeah. you know, they pick as you said about with your with your atlas at EBIT, they pick a different route as opposed to <laughs> uh, slogs. Just clatters. If ever you ride with slogs, it's it's a beautiful thing. To watch a bulldozer going at full pay- pace for <laughs> anything that comes his way. <laughs> it's, it's point to point, isn't it? Point it in the direction you want to go and just fucking go through it. <laughs> it was a really heavy thumb, just push forward and just plow straight through absolutely anything. Um but it but, does yeah. it does cost a lot in trucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and motor casings and yeah, and motor casings. <laughs> <laughs> How how do the the newbies hold up? Uh, um, bash guards and stuff like that are they? The the only downside is the kingpin hands quite hangs quite low, and I was doing what slugs normally does the other day. They were like a very treed up area. I didn't realize it was rocks underneath the tree, like the leaf line. Yeah, smacked into the biggest rock ever and bent the rear kingpin sadly. Um, but it's just the kingpin; it's changeable, so it, it's not the worst can it, thing. Can it be? Stuff. Can it be flipped, inverted? The whole truck? No, the the kingpin. I mean, uh, well, I don't. Uh, wh- wh- where well, is the nut on the bottom? It's on the bottom. So can you not? Could they not mount the nut inside the truck and then put the the flush bolt from the bottom? Would that take? They, he did that in his original design, but it just proved too annoying to adjust the truck. So he's... Well, surely, if it's if it would it not have like a you can get hex bolt. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just uh, brainstorming here. But if you had a hex bolt on the top of it, you'd just tighten into the truck. If, it, but you'd only have. I, I appreciate you would only have a certain amount of adjustment. Yeah. Or you, you can. You, your bolt hits the bottom of your tr- uh, deck, I suppose. Yeah. But then that would depend on how deeply you mounted the yeah. the nut. But uh, yeah. I think there's a there's a few of skate longboard brands that used to mount the king uh, yeah. around, um, but yeah, definitely those are those will hang up definitely. Obviously. Yeah, I mean the bushing actually hangs slightly. So I actually broke the uh, washer that sits on the bushing before I hit the kingpin. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like I've never seen a cup washer that misshaped. <laughs> Oh, uh, that thankfully they're not an expensive part. Yeah, I mean, at least and and like, as you say, if it's just a uh, a dual kingpin, it's not going to take too long either. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a matter of t- undoing, taking the truck off, undoing the one grub screw that holds it in, 
pumping it out and just putting a new one in. They don't cost much anyways. Yeah. Feels like it's a consumable. I mean, kingpins are kind of consumables anyways at the end of the day. Well, this is it, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And that, that's one thing that, that we as off-roaders have to understand. You know, if you, if you look at a mountain bike or a mountain biker, general mountain bikers, general uh, moat, uh, like off-road enduro motorcyclists and things yeah. like that, their kit all gets like checked over and rejuvenated if they take it seriously and yeah. don't want to go out and encounter issues every ride and stuff yeah. like that. They're stripping it and, you know, resetting and checking everything over. And I, I think that we as electric riders should be doing the same, you know, especially if you've, you've got a motor there, aren't you? That's true. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not, everybody can take it to obsession levels, but yeah. Um, yeah. Do you check over your board slogs when you ride? Do I kick the tires. Does that mean? Does that mean it's a full on hundred percent MOT on it every time? <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. A, kick, a general kick of the tires, or or a squidge of the thumb. Oh, a squidge of the thumb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't really check my board. To be fair, <laughs> 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 so <it's> piece. <laughs> That's it. Oh no. Maybe yeah, maybe that's why maybe that's why you encounter a few issues there. Have a, have, a, have a little look over once or twice. You might find a few loose bolts here and there. That's true. I have lost a couple of bolts on rides before. It's like, oh, that's, this is loose now. <laughs> I am um, on when me and Slogs rode up Snowden. Yeah, I looked down at one point, and I was like, oh, I've lost a bolt. It was one of the the the. Um, the bolts that hold the the gears in place on the right, and a couple of them had come loose, and one had completely disappeared. And we just tightened what I had left up, and I think we put something else in. And then on the way down, Eamon finds it on the, <laughs> on the track. Like, <laughs> it was incredible. Eyes like eyes like a bloody magpie. That kid. It was mental yeah. that we stopped in the same place twice on the way up and down. Yeah, that was just. <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> um so yeah what what can we expect to see of you over the the next sort of um year or so Taylor? you got more plan more competition plans i mean whenever there's competition i'll try to be there is the plan i mean i don't know of any ever really that many competitions happening yet those mm -hmm. of the next rest of the year so Whenever there's something up, I'll generally try to get there for the competitions. Well, I, I, go on. Sorry, no, I want to cut you. I mean, I don't. But also for competitions wise, I don't like some of the US style competitions like Eastgate Con, where you're hitting forty something miles an hour. It feels too fast and dangerous to me, to a certain <laughs> extent. Yeah. My most of my boards are my my mountain board top side like twenty. 20 something like 28 27 ish yeah. it's i don't personally feel a need to really like break 35 ever on any board mm. it's, i feel like it's kind of too dangerous so normally those bigger outdoor go-kart track events i tend to miss right because um, i mean yeah they do they i don't know some of these is it the stooge boards and that they're like oh, yeah 40 50 60 mile an hour machines yeah exactly uh, uh, it'll be leathers and full-on motorcycle leathers essentially yeah. is what you're wanting on that uh yeah it's not my bag and i certainly wouldn't want to be doing that off-road <laughs> that's true <laughs> although though maybe maybe we'll hit maybe we'll hit the top speed of the board in some of the straights this year at, at ebit i'm pretty yeah. sure last year we must have been doing last year um, maybe but yeah, I think my my spur only tops out about twenty four, and the the o, OBD, I think that tops out late twenty, uh, early thirties, thirty two. I can get yeah. twenty six twenty six off the spur, and about thirty two off of the the OBD. Yeah, and that's plenty fast enough, especially on yeah, road. exactly. Well, especially if you're whipping around the woods. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I like good. to see the trees coming at me, not like blurred, not. Just right at the end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there. I think there's a big addiction of speed in a lot of the electric scene, less so in the mountain board scene. I think 
I mean, there's a couple of mountain boarders who still like to go really fast in a straight line. Yeah. So, but I think in mountain boarding, there's a lot more like technicality and like corners are a bigger thing compared to just blasting it as fast as you can in a straight line, which I don't find interesting to me whatsoever. I think what it's, it's once you've done it a few times and know what it feels like, but yeah, and know you can do it, it's kind of like, well, what can I do next? And that's where you say the technicality comes into it. I, I like riding off road on motorbikes and, and I like the electric mountain boarding for very similar reasons. Um, yeah. you know, the, the climbing is as much fun as the downhill is as much fun as the flat and, and for different reasons. Um, yeah. The weight distribution is a massive thing on these electric boards. Um, yeah. And is something that I think we as mountain boarders coming from mountain boarding to the electric scene, we kind of had to hop a bit on how to ride these things in the woods, downhills. Yeah. It came to going back uphill again in the woods. It was just, a, it's just as much of a learning experience for any of us mm. as, as anybody picking a board up for the first time. I suppose the only thing that, that we have had in our favor was the ability to utilize momentum um, yeah. in climbing. And that's certainly something you've never struggled with. You've always kept your momentum there on that when I've <laughs> seen you riding, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so, so who's coming along to a bit of your cruise? Billy and Tom, are they coming along this year? Uh, Tom's queer mountain boarding, from what I know. So oh, no. Billy, but Billy's coming. Yeah, my board is Tom's old Apex. So right. he brought that to me. And he sold the Ace deck to some other guy. So um, he doesn't have a mountain board anymore. He, I don't really know what he's doing, to be fair. Um, but Billy's coming. Um, there's two other guys who ride Apexes in London, so all four of us should be going to EBIT. Now, question for you. You say, obviously, you're, you're in London at the moment. Billy's in London. There's a couple of other lads with electric mountain boards in London. Yeah. Where are you riding? Just, like, mountain bike trails. There's a couple of them around. and mm -hmm. uh, like, Or footpaths, just any anywhere we can find, basically. I was going to say, I know Billy puts on a couple of events um, that are off-road, but those, from what I've... I can't see where they're riding off-road, where they're... Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, they're in a city. They're in yeah, a but it's like, I suppose, is it like... Is it Parkland or...? Yeah, it's Parkland, but, like, there's... Next to where Evolve is based, there is um the old Olympic mountain bike trails. Ah. So we rode those quite a bit, but they're quite rocky and not very easy on a mountain board. The rocks are a little bit too big for us. Yeah. So there's some woodland stuff nearby as well. Like they're mostly footpaths, but they're wide enough for our boards. So they're fairly easy. You can blast at quite quite some speed through them. So yeah. I got a little tip for the top. Um I mean I assume obviously Greenwich Park is is fantastic. But yeah. if ever you find yourself heading out to Kentway and you can get in there, if it, this sounds like the start of the A team, if you get out to Kentway and if you get let in there, <laughs> then Penshurst Off Road Centre, mm. um, which is a mountain bike trail centre down near Tunbridge. Uh, yeah. And we used to go there riding mountain boards back in the day, but they've got loads of tracks there. Um, single tracks they've got a bx a downhill board across yeah. there and some uh, a hefty set of of jumps from like a jump section in there definitely worth a look down that way yeah we've also been going to bedgebury which is also a man bike trail center down south it's actually it's like an hour or so away from london which is a bunch of single tracks it's like seven or eight miles loop it's uh -huh. mostly it's quite flat to be fair but so it's not really doable on it traditional mountain board but on the electric mountain boards it's a blast because you get a nice mix of trails and stuff oh definitely that's i mean that's that's where it's at i mean well i i i've got a couple of questions that i'm sitting here thinking of but i'm scared that i'm i'm verging on slogs's Right, well, live I've set been... territory and what what time are we on we've we've smashed yeah, through we're... a load I'll of do, stuff anyway. I'll do a deal man i'll do my five now yeah. And then you can mop up afterwards. How's that sound? 
that, that sounds like a regular Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, said. Yeah, go on, go for it. <laughs> right. I've got five questions for you. Just don't think about it too much. Whip an answer out. For yeah. The first one I know is Ereg or Goof? Reg. Is that on all board sports? Uh, apart from push skating, I'm goofy on push skating. Ah, there you go. We're on a run of it. There's so many people out there. I'd never heard of it before, but now there's so many. Yeah, I can't push on my um, other foot. I can't push regular for some reason. If I have to push on a board, I can't push on my like, regular. But on a snowboard, on a mountain board, on an electric skateboard, I break. Yeah. Right. you got to pick one of these now. Dirt or tarmac? Ooh, more recently, dirt, admittedly. I've been doing more and more trails, and since tarmac's being harder and harder to ride on with police presence and stuff, um, I've been doing a lot more dirt riding, and you're, it's easier to push the limits for me on dirt, because like, there's a lot less grip, a lot less traction, so you're more on that like slidey limit, which is quite fun, to be honest. So, yeah. Yeah, like that. Um. What's your best race? Best race. Ooh, that was a lot while ago. It was um it was hosted by Backfire in Shenzhen, China. Um back that was back when I was on a Trampa urban carver, which is what I call the mountain board. But now that I've actually ridden proper mountain boards, it is not a mountain <laughs> board. <laughs> <laughs> uh well I did have it set up more like a traditional man board. I didn't have the rear box. I had a battery in the middle, the ESCs mm -hmm. in the back, and full bindings. So nothing on the bottom. Like So it was set up like a smaller, big man board. Yeah. But yeah, that was a fun race. It was before like kind of the racing and the e scene like blew up in China, I guess. What, what I, year would that have been? I think it was 2019. It was just during COVID, like just started COVID. Just yeah. before COVID, I think, yeah. Is uh, is e-boarding huge in China now? Uh, it's not huge, but it's like getting there. I think more and more people are interested. We, when I was back just last month, uh, newbie and I hosted like the first ever kind of e-bit style event. We had we built a e-pre style track on on a field and um, invited a bunch of people around and gave out a couple, like had a couple of prizes and stuff. So yeah, it was quite fun. It was most mountain boards anybody's seen in China in one place. So I think we had twenty-ish boards, most on like about oh. half mountain boards. So that was yeah, the most mountain, mountain boards any of us had really seen. And since mountain boarding is still a really niche thing there, that was pretty good. Oh, well done for setting that up, man. Well done yeah. for setting that up because, uh, like, it's hard work putting events on, and and. Uh, you know, it, as Slug said, is the scene big there? And obviously, like you say, it's blooming as such. But um, I can't think of any, like, uh, Chinese mountain boarders yeah, throughout I don't the entire history of mountain boarding. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know why. You know, but parts have been produced there for, for many years. Yeah, yeah, that's true. MBS is still being produced there to this day. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Um, yeah, uh, like how 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 come? I like I, I'd have you know th th there are hills there, right? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I guess I guess we never had like th when China was becoming having more disposable income, it kind of grew up so fast that I think it missed out a lot of stuff. Like yeah. Car culture and everything is like just starting, like modification of cars and stuff, which has been in the UK for years and years, is like just starting to become a thing in Asia and China specifically. So like I think it's been late or like missed a lot of things. And as mountain boarding, like traditional mountain boarding, I feel like has had a slight decline since the early two thousands. I think. Oh yeah, definitely. So I think it managed to kind of miss where it was quite. Uh, interesting sport so yeah yeah i don't think there's any traditional mountain borders that i know of and and what what do you think the the reception was of these electric mountain boards 
to i mean it's a bit hard to say because if you're going to an event you're kind of knowing what to expect as such but yeah surely if there aren't that many they've got a lot they've got to have had a bit of attention from from people that hadn't seen them before do you think is it a scene that is going to grow i mean if new new is newbie based there uh yeah he used to be based in australia but he moved to china because it's a lot easier to do production there yeah so um yeah he's currently based in china now and yeah i mean a lot of after that event because well mountain boards obviously dominated the top leaderboards compared to the at boards um mm. there was more interest in how f- mountain boards were able to like jump we dug out a little ramp and stuff so like we were trying 180 well i was trying to do a 180 and failed a couple times but um yeah, it was like, I think it got a couple of people interested in having full bindings and trying to like jump and stuff like that. So who knows? Was that the last question? We, we went in deep on that quest on that question. Was that the last of the five? I no, I've got, I've got one more, man. Uh, most memorable riding experience. What sticks out in your head is like... I don't know, actually. I feel like it's when I compete, all those like competing memories stick out a lot in my head because the adrenaline rush of like standing, waiting at the start line, mm-hmm. it's just like more yeah. than anything else comparatively. But and, like, it's we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do you find that when you're on the start line? Always, yeah, needed. it's like fun. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, that that too. Like at the start of the E pre, I was. I mean, I raced against you, Dad, didn't I? And one of the races. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, you, yeah. you were beating me. It is not my strong point. The E pre. <laughs> I, I, I am so shit at it. <laughs> you would have definitely have beaten me. <laughs> the E pre is without a doubt the best event if you're a spectator out of E bit. Yeah. Because it's small and like tight, so like it's a lot easier to watch like, the whole thing. Yeah, and the riders bunch up and then separate out and then yeah. sort of bunch up again through the corners, and it's a great event. Yeah, I love the Epre. I mean, it's also kind of my style of thing with my like track racing, kind of on the road yeah. side, tarmac side. So the Epre was closest to what I'm used to, which was great. Yeah. Uh, that uh, 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 how did you fare in the E Prix on on the? Uh, uh, I got into the semis, I think, and yeah. I got knocked out by. Uh, I was in a heat with Beery and and a bunch of those pros that I was like, well, they're pros. So I'll get knocked out, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Consolation knockout is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, <laughs> but to be fair, again, you know, if you're making the semis there, and you're on a I know, but this is up against, like you say, riders that, are, that have been pros over the years on full on mountain boards and doing this on uh, an, what's essentially an electric skateboard. Yeah. An, an all terrain electric skateboard. I mean, fair play to you. Fair play to you. It yeah, was it wasn't the right see. board for that. I was like, my feet were moving so much on, because <laughs> the E3 track that. was admittedly more rutted out than the Enduro track, because the Enduro track, it's kind of like dug to be quite smooth, but the E track wasn't treated, so it had a lot of like hidden ruts and stuff that just knocked yeah. you everywhere. And as the rounds kept going on, around those around those corners, there was a lot, a lot of digging in and ruts going down through. Yeah, <laughs> it got quite hard. At the, yeah, yeah. Fair play, man. Fair play. I look forward to seeing you on a proper electric mountain board this year. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. I don't know. If, I'll be faster or slower, to be honest. Hopefully faster, but um, we'll see. Oh, I've got faith in you. I've got faith in you. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I look forward to to seeing all your results, both on a mountain board and and on the 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 e-skates. Uh, I really do. It's nice, nice to see a, a you know a little bit of silverware here and there <laughs> coming in. Yeah. Um, we had a, a new follower on the Instagram. Today, a, a Samo East, a Samo's on board. Oh uh, yeah, it's written me recently too, actually. Yeah, uh, it's written down as 2018 World Champion. So there must be a World Championships out there. I reckon there could be a 23 or 24 Tilo Jus Champion World Champion there potentially. Uh, 
the 2018 World Champion, I believe, was the Paris Cup in 2018. Um, Lee was one of the hosting uh, hosters of that. I wouldn't call it a World Championship. It was just Europe, I yeah. think. It was just, like it was hosted in Paris. It wasn't. Was, that, mean, was, was, was it Moja? Career. Did he do well? Then? Yeah, Moja did it. Yeah, it was a bunch of those OG fighters around. Yeah. I think Mojo was one of the main hosters. Ricardo, who hosts Carv UK, yeah, they they hosted it. Um, so yeah, uh-huh. I was before I moved to the UK, so I wasn't there. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> or an electric board. I don't think I was there either. <laughs> I, I don't think I know I wasn't there, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> well, maybe. Um, yeah. So, slogs. Any others in the five? I'm, yeah. I'm rubbish at counting. Yeah, well, do you want to mop up? Yeah, go on. I'll ask a question that, that should have been in the five. Not should have, could have been in the five. Uh, if you had to choose one of your electric vehicles, if one rule, one to rule them all, which would you choose? Oh, that is a hard question. I don't know. I feel like in my head, every single one of my vehicles has a purpose. Like yeah. a slightly different purpose, but they all yeah, have yeah. Purposes. That's why we have multiple motorbikes or yeah, multiple exactly. cars, or yeah, <laughs> everything's fit for a different purpose. But I guess if I only had one thing, I'd take a longboard because that's able to do the most amount of different things. Because the mountain board kind of sucks at trying to turn tight corners <laughs> <laughs> and for commuting, yeah, and yeah. having to strap in every time, yeah. <laughs> um, that's fair enough, fair enough, but uh, I mean. There's so much, I mean, I have probably way too many. I think I have nine or ten at the moment. Different <laughs> electric. <laughs> Fuck it out, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's some serious electric power in that house. That's, that's, that's a quiver and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I've got a lot of choice and... I mean, I use, I mean, I use most, I use about five on rotation. Right, like like day to day for different tasks. Like if I want to go somewhere nearby yeah. and it, it, I'd probably take a one wheel because it's just smooth and comfortable. Yeah, and slightly longer, I'll take a long board out. Going off road, I'll take the mountain board off out. Just so many. Different to go things. on a group ride, what would be your your choice? Currently, it's the mountain board, just because I can hop on and off everything just like mm. have fun because a people to just plowing straight down a, a tarmac line yeah i was just like oh there's a curve i'll hop on do a little thing hop off that's the just way like, that's the way have fun with it because they don't they don't tend to be going super fast mm-hmm. if there's a lot of people there because obviously different levels and stuff so it's nice to have something i can do like slower speed technical stuff with uh. makes sense well, listen to you, is there is there anything um, that we have missed or glossed over? I mean, I'm just looking at the time. We, we aim for a sort of an hour, which we're just creeping over now. Um, and I don't want to take up, I don't like taking a piss and taking up too much of anybody's time. Um, but yeah, is there any part of your story that, that we, we've we missed? Because, you know, we're not totally familiar we don't know your life history or anything like that or or even you know what what you're up to but if there is anything feel free to say if there are any shout outs you want to give or anything like that then then go for it not really i guess uh the only thing to really consider is this is only technically my second month mountain boarding at ebit this year second or third month mountain boarding raw <laughs> so we'll see how that goes Oh, well, it's, yeah, I mean, before that, it was the Tramp of Urban Carver, but that's never actually seen knobby tires on it. It's always been on street tires. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, I mean, it, it allowed me to like hop and do little jumps and stuff, but it's never really been pushed on dirt. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how I fare. So you're obviously not fussed about being locked into the board with the bindings because you've got that experience from that board. Yeah. So you're familiar with that feeling, which is the thing that most people seem to suffer, uh, you know, not suffer from, but that's the thing that freaks them out a little bit about mountain boards. Um, I mean, I snowboard as well, so I can, it's yeah. feel 
like snowboarding to a yeah. certain extent, like being locked in, being able to move the board around is actually kind of nice being locked in. Um, now, one other question I have for you. Have you tried um, just a, a normal downhill mountain board? That's something I've been wanting to try. Like that's been on my list of, I need to learn that because I think a lot of techniques in normal on normal downhill mountain boarding will be really useful for like yeah. being electric, especially like, how to slide stop. Cause yeah. that's something I can't consistently do yet. Like I've yeah. been trying to learn how to slide out the back end, both heel side and toe side, but I ended up either over rotating or under rotating. It's just a mess at the moment. So I've been wanting to do try like traditional long ma- mountain boarding. And also the boys so much lighter, I can do yeah. tricks a lot easier. Oh yeah, man. It's night and day in terms of like, yeah. well, that's it set. Ebit. Yeah. yeah. In the get on a downhill board and try. Yeah. Along so with the good to <laughs> Have you had a go on them when you're there? Which one's the little like slidey things? The little grass sledges. Yeah. I think I tried one last time. Yeah, was that oh, one. Oh, they were a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs will be killing me for saying this. <laughs> You're bloody <laughs> advertising the grass sledges again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but you just like bomb full speed down a hill. <laughs> yeah, care. it's great fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll definitely, definitely have to see it, get yours on a. Unfortunately, I'm not getting there till the Sunday. So, slog it. You'll be there. You'll have to get. Yeah. The we're gonna... We're going up Thursday morning. We've decided today. That's early. Oh you, yeah, we're going for a, we're going for a run down the hill, man. Plenty of boards there. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to get there Friday morning. Is the plan because some people have to work annoyingly. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're going there Friday morning and seeing how it goes. Slogs is part of the furniture now at, at Bugs. Yeah, I can't give away. It's only two and a half hours up the road. <laughs> That's still a good amount of distance. I think Bugs is only about three or four hours away up the road from us. Yeah. Um, the UK is luckily quite small. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> certainly by comparison to uh, to China, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, dude, if, the, if, if there's nothing else, I'm going to look to wrap this episode up. If that's sure. okay, yeah. um, I'd love to have you back on again uh, yeah, at some sure. point in the future. You know, as we go through these dirty episodes, um, it'd be nice to call on you from time to time. Does Newbie speak um, English? Yeah, he used to live in Australia, so he should be. Oh, well, yes, he did say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My memory is not what it was. <laughs> um, well, maybe, maybe I shall have to uh, uh, have a chat with Newbie at some point because if you're putting yeah. out some decent products there um, that can be used without motors, the mountain board industry as well, yeah. or community, you might well be uh, do well to take up and have a look and yeah, interest I mean, in trying something new. I'm happy for anyone at EBIT to try out my board if they're interested. Well, that they'd have to be a regular writer. Me, writers, me, so. me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, definitely. I, I shall be having a noggle and be probably hitting you up for your remote at some point after competition, yeah. obviously. I mean, I've got a fast charger anyway, so I don't care. <laughs> um, perfect. Well, look, we shall see you next weekend, too. Yeah. Um, looking forward to seeing you again, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again and just being back on my board again. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a great one. Uh, tonight has been a great one. Thank you very much. Um, for you. joining us um, and yeah we'll see you on the next well we'll see we yeah. won't see you on the next episode we'll see somebody else on the next episode <laughs> we'll see Tilo in 10 days in ten, we'll yeah. see Tilo in 10 days uh, <laughs> you've been watching the dirt it'll be great if you liked and subscribed thank you very much laters thank you bye bye cheers yeah, Tilo thanks for joining us uh, buddy fucking like and subscribe Dan <laughs> <laughs> Layers. Bye. 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 Take it easy, guys. <laughs> Way I man. That was dead canny as out that lake. Cheers for turning out listen. Now, before you gan yem, don't forget, if you want to keep getting doing with the dirty dot fun, like and subscribe. Get amongst it. Shy Ben's getting out. <laughs>